Welcome to Real Estate Focus. Our topic is flood zones. My guest is Claudio Sala. Claudio has been a land surveyor for over 25 years, and he is here today to share with us about changes in the flood zones. Um, Claudia has performed land surveying throughout certain areas of Massachusetts, and he has the experience um, of talking about flood zones. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Thank you for to be here again. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that uh, the information that we're going to talk about is going to be very important. Hopefully. uh, Hopefully we'll help some homeowners in court. Right, right. That's right. So uh, with that being said, so um, the first question is, what are flood zones? Well, um, flood zones basically are different zones of flooding categories that the, that the federal government puts out um, through FEMA, mm-hmm. uh, the Federal Emergency, federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, they, um, they're classified as different zones depending on how the storms affect the flooding in that particular area, uh, whether it be coastal or inland flooding. Um, so they're, and they also set the height at which the 100-year floodplain elevation would reach uh, during such storms. Great. And uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, finding out whether the property um, is in a flood zone or not, or uh, if the property is at risk um, or not, um, how do, how do a, a general consumer or um, um, homeowner would find out? Uh, the simplest way, well, first of all, you, you, the easiest way is to go to the FEMA website. Mm-hmm. It's now pretty easy to navigate. Mm-hmm. Um, Uh, It's FEMA.com. You navigate through to the uh, Mm -hmm. uh, flood map um, database. Right. And then it's simply typing your home address, Mm -hmm. and it will zoom into your parcel. Well, it will zoom into your area. Mm -hmm. And then you can actually view the map. Mm -hmm. Um, And by zooming in and out, you can find your own home, um, since they are based on aerial photography. Um, And the shading... If you're in a flood zone, you'll, it will be shaded, probably blue, um, and it will have an associated zone with it, like AE or VE, mm-hmm. uh, and an elevation. So you can tell if your house is within that shaded area, which means you're in the flood zone. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, the shade of blue, is that what you call it? It is a light bluish shade. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm colorblind, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, in terms of the uh, the map, I mean, what is what is a, a flood insurance m- rate map? I mean, is that the map that uh, most uh, insurance company use, or? Oh yes, that is yeah. actually the map that FEMA puts out right. um, for the entire country. Mm-hmm. Um, the insurance company would use the information on that map mm-hmm. um, for to determine your your whether you're in a flood zone or not, mm-hmm. as, just as you would mm-hmm. um, look on the map. Right. Now, with, with the, uh, the new fl- flood maps uh, in a lot of areas, uh, I would say throughout um, the country and also uh, throughout Massachusetts, and of course, you know, we in Massachusetts, uh, we can only speak uh, uh, about uh, what changes that will be coming in Massachusetts. Um, as you, you all know, um, in 2014, uh, FEMA um, put a lot of uh, uh, areas in, 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 in the new flood zone. Uh, or the new flood maps, if you will, and um, with the appeal and complaint from you know residents stuff like that, um, there will be changes coming as of August of this year. So, can you share that information? Yes, um, as you all remember, the FEMA maps from 2014 raised the flood elevation in many coastal areas. Uh, that's important. It, it, it's not. It didn't affect inland storm areas, but coastal areas, um, as much as three feet and four feet in some cases. Um, they were extreme. Um, the city actually made an appeal to FEMA to correct the maps uh, based on, the f- they felt that I believe FEMA was using categories of storms from the Pacific Ocean as, mm-hmm. as opposed mm-hmm. to the Atlantic where right. we are. Right. Uh, apparently, uh, FEMA did agree uh, and they will be issuing new, what they call letter of map revision, LOMER, mm-hmm. um, which we have here a copy of one that will take, well, it's, 
slated to take effect August 21st, mm -hmm. according to this map, this particular portion. Yeah. Um, f what FEMA does is they, they publish the maps, say, annually or semi-annually. They used mm -hmm. to be every 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. um, now they do it more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, but in the interim, in between publishing the actual maps, they issue these letters of map revision mm -hmm. for areas that change or are incorrect. So these maps are now interim. They're, they're in the um, approval process, um, and they are slated to take effect in August. However, I spoke to the city engineer, and he felt that that timetable may not be effective. Um, they will probably take effect later than that. Um, he also mentioned that they may even bypass this letter of map revision and go right to the new amended maps as early as the fall. Mm. Of this year? Of this year. Mm -hmm. However, it is all still subject to a lot of revisions and changes, which um, the city is working with FEMA to incorporate mm -hmm. into the new maps. Right. So, <clears throat> um, for um, especially first time home buyers who are looking at properties, and they found out that um, uh, the property that they wanted uh, is now in the flood zone. However, um, changes will be made. Uh, how they can how they can they confirm that the changes will be made um, when it comes to August or fall of this year? Uh, confirming is 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 different than possible. They would possibly change. Right. Um, it's these probable, in, right? It's probable. Um, <laughs> these interim maps, as I yeah. said, are, are still in the process of being revised. Yeah. There are many errors, according to the city, mm -hmm. in them. Um, they are still not final. Mm. Um, mm. So you can't really confirm. However, mm -hmm. by looking at the FEMA website, you can tell if your property is in the floodplain mm -hmm. now. And uh, by and of course, you cannot get these LOMA on mm -hmm. the website, on the FEMA website yet, until they take effect. Um, but you can go see them at the engineering department. So you can compare mm -hmm. the current map to this letter of map revision mm -hmm. and see if you will be in or out. Also, you will see the different levels. Mm -hmm. Not only did they change whether you are in the floodplain or out of the floodplain, but they changed the flood elevations. They, they will be reducing them to more mm -hmm. levels that are more like the 2014 maps. So your flood risk may not be as high. I see. So um, <clears throat> so the map that you just sh um, shown, um, one side is, 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 is with um, shaded blue and then the other one doesn't. Uh, now, was that, was that, was that section uh, classified as flood map before and then, and then gets changed as of um, August 2015, like, like that one right there on the left-hand side, was that classified as, as, as flood zone before? Yes, they were all flood zones. That is um, the left-hand you know, side. The left-hand the left hand side is the city of Boston, and then oh, okay. you have the oh. Neponset, uh, the Neponset River. Okay. So the right-hand side of the line is the city of Quincy, which is what we're involved okay. with. Um, the blue areas are the areas of flood zone. Mm -hmm. They show the line between the blue, say at the bottom, where you have sort of a yellowish. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know what that is really. Yeah, right. But right. The, it shows the extent of the flooding mm -hmm. in that area. Now, if you compare that to the 2014 maps, that mm -hmm. line is different. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, you have the zone classifications mm -hmm. with the elevations. Right. Um, so it's not easy to do without having both maps in front of you, but mm -hmm. uh, it can be done. It, these are sort of right. poorly created. Right. Uh, but you can do a lot more on the website. So basically, there, there are a couple of uh, websites that pe people can go and look for those maps. Number one is um, FEMA, of course. Yes. Number two is uh, Quincy website, GIS. Yes. Um, yeah. The city of Quincy's GIS actually has incorporated these new Lomer mm -hmm. maps into their um, GIS. Uh, so if you, if you find your parcel and then you, you can actually click to include, to overlay the um, flood zones, you can choose between the 2012 flood zones, the 2014 flood zones, and now the proposed 2015 flood zones. Mm -hmm. So clicking one, and you have to close one and open the other one, but you can see the changes that may occur. Yep, um, right. It's, it's actually a very good. It is not correct. I've noticed, I've noticed some errors, mm -hmm. um, and that's probably because the, the lomers are incorrect. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, it gives you a very good indication. Right. Because, because they are still in the transition period. They are. Yeah. Um, 
So, so that's why um, some of the uh, information are sort of, you know, wrong, if you will. So, um, so with the changes, I mean, what what do they mean by what do they mean to the homeowners? I mean, do they, can they, um, you know, cancel their uh, flood insurance by next year or the expiration of their policies? Yes, in some cases, um, the 2014 maps, I think, put. Three, some in somewhere in the order of 3,000 homes in the city of Quincy in the flood zones mm -hmm. when where they were never in the flood zones before. Mm -hmm. uh, the 2015 maps will reduce that number, um, not the entire 3,000 homes, more or less, but a good portion of them. Um, so it's possible that you were not in the flood zone in 2012, then you be, were in the flood zone in 2014, and now you will possibly be out of the flood zone again mm -hmm. altogether. Or simply they lowered the elevations to a more reasonable elevation where you will now pay a less less premium. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So because the class of the flood plain could make a, make a huge difference in terms of uh, premiums. I mean, from if it goes from you know, X to I don't know, X to VE, something like that, or VE yes. to X. Um, know, so. Yes, that, that is also another issue. Um, right. A lot of areas were classified V zones, which are wave mm -hmm. action zones, mm -hmm. um, those have extremely higher rates because they're subject to wave action, mm -hmm. so a wave could actually hit your house. Um, those have also been declassified from V zones to A zones, which mm -hmm. are not subject to wave action, so again, that lowers your insurance premium because the risk factor mm -hmm. to your house is much lower. Right. So um, <clears throat> that comes to um, where Homeowners want to um, dispute um, their pr premiums or uh, their flood zone cl classification with uh, their flood insurance companies. Um, uh, should they perform what is called um, the elevation certificate? Yes, elevation certificate is not really a dispute. It's um, it it clarifies your elevations in relation to the uh, mm -hmm. flood zone. So a surveyor would determine the elevation of your basement floor, first floor, mm -hmm. the ground outside your structure, mm -hmm. um, furnace, hot water heater, mechanicals. Mm -hmm. the, all that information will be input into the elevation mm -hmm. certificate and your insurance agent will use that mm -hmm. to plug into their program to mm -hmm. determine your rate. So if you don't have an elevation certificate, they obviously charge you the maximum mm -hmm. uh, rate. Mm -hmm. uh, with the elevation certificate, you may get a reduced rate depending on the risk factor. Mm -hmm. um, so how long will it take for the owner to get the elevation certificate? How long? Yes. Uh, it, it would depend on the surveyor and how busy they are okay. um, and how difficult mm -hmm. the job is. In Quincy, um, I can probably do an elevation certificate within a week and a half to two mm -hmm. weeks. Um, obviously more rural areas, you have to survey further mm -hmm. uh, for a benchmark uh, for a known elevation. So mm -hmm. it will take longer, more research and obviously more expensive. Right. So, um, in terms of um, the um, um, eleva elevation certificate, um, does it have the expiration day on it, or is is good forever, or is good until the the flood map changes? The, your elevation certificate, is, yes, I, I suppose technically it's it's good until the flood map changes. Mm -hmm. However, if the flood map changes to a different zone, then it's just a matter of you're just relating to a different elevation. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, however, you change the structure of your house, mm -hmm. uh, raise it, lower it, move your furnace from basement to upstairs, then your, the elevation certificate would no longer be valid. You would have mm -hmm. to update that elevation certificate. Right. So basically, the elevation certificate does make a difference in terms of uh, reducing the premiums. Of not, the always. Policy. not always. Not always. Not yeah. always. Yeah. But yeah. yes, um, yeah. it would. It would help. I have seen some cases right. where it's actually increased um, right. the premium. I see. Um, yeah. Very rare, but yes. I see. <laughs> so it's more than bene beneficial huh? sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. it depends on you know the uh, elevations, uh, elevation of the the ground as well, and also the flood the flood zone. Yes. Yeah. So um, so like a surveyor like yourself can do it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And in terms of uh, surveyor, how, how, how could they locate um, a, a licensed uh, surveyor for the uh, elevation certificate? I mean, other than yourself. Yeah. Um, the city's um, border registration, I mean, the, the Commonwealth's border registration website 
Mm -hmm. um, you can go to the Board of Registration for Civil Engineers and Land Surveyors and you can plug in the City of Quincy and it would give you a list of all licensed mm -hmm. uh, surveyors in the City of Quincy or simply um, the phone book um, mm -hmm. just or search Google search um, mm -hmm. Quincy Land Surveyors. Mm -hmm. I see. So Google is the, is the best friend in terms of uh, looking for su surveyors and also the uh, city of uh, well, Boston's uh, the state website as well. The state website gives you their licensing information. Okay. Um, okay. Whether they right. have any issues or problems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, litigations or something like that. Right. right? Complaints. Right. Okay. And um, and so um, in terms of um, uh, are there any are there any programs out there that can help um, homeowners uh, with costs reducing the flood? risk any 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 programs out there that the government can help there were some very good programs yeah. um, those programs seem to have gone by the wayside mm. um, after Hurricane Katrina FEMA sort of changed their guidelines um, and now they, they they require a lot more they'll give you a lot less they require you to purchase flood insurance forever if you receive these grants um, so those programs which were administered by the Housing Rehab Office, I don't see those any longer. Mm -hmm. um, they're ineffective, and which is mm -hmm. too bad because mm -hmm. FEMA had a good program there and it helped a lot of people and it did reduce their risk. Mm -hmm. um, they mm -hmm. paid less premiums because people's mm -hmm. homes did not flood after this, obviously. Right. Right. Um, and now they're just they're mm -hmm. still flooding. Right. Wow. So every flood they have to pay for a new furnace and a new water heater. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Where they could have given the homeowner a grant to raise those right and right mm. interesting um, so in terms of um, the report itself uh, the elevation um, report uh, certificate report does it does it come in the report or does it come in with uh, like a uh, like a certificate it is a, it, it is a certificate it's a four page report and okay. it has the address um, location of the property things mm -hmm. like that it has the flood elevation mm -hmm. information from the maps mm -hmm. um, and then there's the areas where we plug in the actual elevations of the floors mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. furnace and mm -hmm. uh, the ground mm -hmm. and then on the back depending on the zones you're in on the second page there are different other input that's required or not you describe mm -hmm. your benchmarks mm -hmm. and the last two pages are actually photographs mm -hmm. of the um, of the home the structure mm -hmm. um, which helps the insurance agent with their Mm -hmm. plug in on their website right so um, uh, in terms of homes um, located near the beaches um, are those classified if those classify as V zone is that right VE V zones yes VEs uh, V zones are usually C C word of the seawalls Okay. So they right. are usually subject to wave action. Salt right. marshes. Some salt marshes will have a V zone mm -hmm. up until a certain point, and then mm -hmm. theoretically the waves settle mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. um, there were some a lot of marshes that had V zones in the 2014 maps that probably shouldn't have, and I mm -hmm. think those are being corrected. Right. Um, but usually V zones are wave action zones. Mm -hmm. um, areas where a house is really close to the seawall mm -hmm. are subject to these zones. A lot mm -hmm. of times wave action will just hit the wall and come over. Right. And those tend to take much longer for you to perform the uh, elevation certificate because of the high content of the water level or table. To actually create the elevation certificate? Yeah. Probably. Right. It, it's probably a little bit longer because yeah. we give them additional information than we would in an A zone, mm -hmm, like the mm -hmm. bottom of the floor joists right, and things like that. Right, yeah. uh, a little bit longer, but not much. Yeah. It's the same form. Mm -hmm, right. And what is a special flood hazard area, also known as SFHA? What, what does that mean? The flood zones, the A zones, the V zones, the AOs, okay. those are actually special flood hazard areas. Okay. Um, when yeah. you get into they now have zone X. They used to have A, B, C. Now they mm -hmm. have zone X. Mm -hmm. um, they have zone X shaded, zone X unshaded. Mm -hmm. um, the zone X's are not considered special flood hazard areas. Mm -hmm. um, they are subject to limited flooding, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they do not require flood insurance. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the shaded areas which do fl require the flood insurance are special flood hazard areas. Right. And on the other hand, what is a non-special flood hazard area. I guess that would be anything that is not within 
So not for the flood zones. zones. Okay, yeah. yep. Okay, got it. So now, um, what what is the lowest risk in terms of uh, flood zone wise? You got an X, you got a UV, you got an A, you got an AE. I mean, which one is the lowest risk at risk? The A's, mm -hmm. the A's are just floodwaters that rise and recede. Mm -hmm. So I guess those would be lower risk than the V zones, which are mm -hmm. their velocity zones. Mm -hmm. So okay, um, I see. They used to have different A's, AOs, oh, um, wow. areas of settling. That I don't see that anymore. That I detail, see that a huh? little bit. Wow. It is very detailed in some mm -hmm. areas where you where you have a seawall and then maybe you have a little bit of a hill yeah, right. right after it. So that's mm -hmm. an additional protection. So right, I see. Those areas obviously mm -hmm. protect your home a little better. Right, I see. Um, mm -hmm. And in terms of uh, um, hiring a surveyor, I mean, what, what kind of questions um, that homeowners should ask um, before they send you a check? <laughs> well, come on in, you know, and do my property. <laughs> For an elevation certificate? Yes, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. Um, it, theoretically, they are all the same. If you're yeah. a registered land surveyor, you have the authority to perform the elevation certificate. Right, right. Fill it out. Um, you should be using standard surveying methods. So if you're registered, I don't see, you know, mm -hmm. obviously you can shop around. Um, mm -hmm. Some surveyors have different rates than others. Um, some surveyors, uh, maybe that's a question. Um, mm -hmm. If have you have you done any elevation certificates in the area? Mm -hmm. Obviously, mm -hmm. that means you have to survey l less. Uh, right, right. You don't have to survey as far. Less experience, yeah. The less yep. expense yep. for right. you. That's right. You know, so that's why right. is it so expensive? Yeah, right, uh, right. Now you're going throughout Massachusetts, right? Do you? Uh, I'm li I'm licensed in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay, and you, yes. you travel around and do um, elevation certificates. We do mostly on yeah. the coast. Um, I see. Yeah. Yes, it, it gets it becomes difficult when you're outside your known area because you don't know where the benchmarks are. So, right, right, it, it takes longer. So you're I see. you're not competitive. But right. I mean, have you have you came across people who ask you um, how many how many um, surveyor surveying how many surveying report or elevations that you have you performed you know last year or something like that? I mean, and uh, if so, where and you know I mean something like that. I mean general questions. I do get general questions. Um, yeah. How you know how many have you done? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. ne nothing really specific in right, the area. Right. I've never had that. Yeah. Um, some people do ask a lot of questions, um, <laughs> which is good. Which is good, That's and good. I don't mind That's answering. Good. No, uh, nothing's wrong I, with that. It's, yep. it's good. You know, I, I'd, I'd rather have my client yes. knowledge, uh, knowledgeable, yep. and That's realize right. that I'm not trying to pull anything. You know, right. So, no, right. That's yes. important. Yeah. But it is very important. So yeah. they understand. And when they go see their insurance agent, mm -hmm. they know the right questions yep. to ask. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Um, so uh, so let's say if, if a, a homeowner would hire you to perform a um, elevation certificate. So what is the process? I mean, what are the procedures? I mean, you go to the property and then you do measurements or? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, first, we would do the research for the property. Yep. Uh, we have to research the legal information, mm -hmm. the address, and everything. Make sure it's to make right sure there's a single family home, multi family home, or something like that. Or? Uh, they only distinguish between residential, commercial, oh, okay. things like that. Yeah. Right, um, right. It doesn't matter. It, we do have to specify whether it's residential or commercial, and I believe that okay. that's because of the insurance rates. They may okay. be different. Does it? That, do you have to classify whether you know residential, whether it's a single family home, or if it's commercial, was a, a building or? Um, shopping mall or something like that? No, or? they just they just okay. ask for a residential, mm -hmm. commercial. Sometimes we have a mixed use, so yeah, right. we will have to That's list right. mixed residential, yep. commercial. That's right, yep. Um, so you did the research before, and then when you go to the uh, the property, then that's when you when you measure. Um, yes. Well, basically, the first step is when they call, they, I have an address, I can give them an estimate. So mm -hmm, I can mm -hmm. tell them how much it will cost. And I can right. usually provide a not-to-exceed estimate. Right. Um, then do the research, set mm -hmm, it up, mm -hmm. um, and I would have to get into the basement. So usually mm -hmm. I would go on a separate day, get into the basement for about five, ten minutes, mm -hmm. and measure the underground utilities, yes, and then yes. I can send a crew on another day to finish the mm -hmm. actual field work right, on the outside. Right, I see. So yeah, after on. that, we would fill out the certificate and mm -hmm. send it to the owner, and mm, I see. they would do with it as they need. I see. <coughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, so it doesn't, that's why it doesn't take long, because, uh, you know, I mean, um, the procedure is pretty um, uh, self-explanatory, if you will. Pretty straightforward yeah, for yeah. every certificate. It's the same. Right, 
basically. Right. It's just a matter of how long you're out in the field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So basically, based on what you have seen so far, um, with the changes coming, I mean, um, would it be beneficial to uh, a lot of areas, or uh, what, what, what is your thought about it? Beneficial to? To a lot of homeowners and a lot of areas in terms of A lot of coastal areas. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah. and it's good for the homeowners. If, if you were not, and then you became, in, you know, right. went into the floodplain, right. keep yeah. track of it, um, keep looking. Uh, mm -hmm. Once these maps take effect, you'll know and you'll have an idea so you can get a jump on mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. changing your premiums or mm -hmm. removing it, um, mm -hmm. hopefully before the next premium is due. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. if you can avoid one year's worth of in flood insurance. Um, That's right. Yeah. And, and basically, they're, they're, if, if your area um, uh, has hit with uh, the new flood plan last year, you know, um, you can get what is called preferred risk insurance I mean that that is uh, the cheapest um, flood insurance to basically protect you for now right and then with the new hopefully with the new changes coming um, you don't need to you know further down the road so unless unless your property has been located in the flood zone for years and years and years there's a different story so um, so that's that's what I would add into it you know so um, so would you like to do anything else or before we wrap it up? Uh, no, no. I, okay. Unless, unless you have any more questions. <laughs> no, I actually, uh, the questions, uh, you know, have been very helpful. And, uh, you know, thank you for sharing uh, the information uh, with uh, homeowners and uh, future home buyers as well. I uh, want to thank you so much for uh, watching and thank you for being part of the show.